Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Noemi and in today's video, I'm going to go over NASM's virtual coaching specialization course. Now I took NASM's virtual coaching course in order to recertify my certification for being a personal trainer. And I wanted to go ahead and do a review of the course and give you guys my feedback. I'm going to go ahead and break down the course by module and chapter, show you my certifications that I got and just give you my overall feedback on the course as a whole. So, um, so yeah, so let's dig right in, dig right in. Let's jump right in. <laughs> All right. So the virtual coaching course was 350 and it came with nine chapters and I got 1.5 CEU credits towards my, um, certification. And so, um, why I took this course was because I've been doing virtual coaching ever since I got my fitness nutrition specialist certification, um, just because I've been doing nutrition coaching online. And so during the pandemic, you know, I had to convert a lot of my clients online. And so I've been kind of just winging it and I've been doing very well, don't get me wrong. But what I liked about the virtual coaching course was that I'd be able to maybe validate, you know, if some of the things that I have in place are correct or maybe find and learn new ways to improve my business and how to better support my clients virtually. And so that's why I ultimately chose this course um, to recertify with. And um, yeah, so I have my, it has its pros and its cons. Like I have things that I like about the course and things that I don't like about the course. So I'm going to share with you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the course first and I'll give you my feedback in between and just, yeah. So these are my notes. Forgive me for looking down. But um, again, like I said, it had nine chapters and it gave me 1.5 CEU credits and it said online that you can complete it within two weeks. I completed it within one week. Again, I was taking at least two hours a day, you know, just to devote time to my studies and um, yeah. And I believe it was a hundred multiple choice tests that you had to complete um, within 90 minutes. And there were a bunch of practice tests for each chapter. Um, and yeah, I did the practice test once, got an 88% and ended up taking the actual exam right after and I got an 85% and I ended up passing. You need a 70% or more to pass and yeah. And just, um, they gave you, you, they recommended that you take the practice exam, I think three times, but the practice exam was also timed similar to the actual exam. And I didn't feel like doing that three times. And, you know, during my studies, you know, there were practice, um, there were quizzes, um, after each chapter, after each module. And I did really well on the quizzes and I felt like, you know, I had a good grasp on the concept. And again, my background is in business and a lot of this course had to do with business. And so... I just, it was like a refresher to me. And so that's why I only took the um, practice exam once and went ahead and took the final exam. Um, I just felt confident that I had grasped the um, material and went ahead and passed the exam. So that is that. But getting into the chapters and the modules. So again, the course is able to be done within two weeks. I did it in one week. There are nine chapters and they break up each chapter down into modules. And some of the modules are broken down into smaller modules, but um, the first chapter was intro to virtual coaching. It just had two modules. It was super short. It was just like an intro to virtual coaching, what to expect, like a brief overview of the course. Um, chapter two, which was building a business, I found this to be the most helpful of all. So it was kind of semi long. It had three modules and it just kind of focused on working in your business versus on your business. Um, gave you basically like a business plan. It broke down like a personal training business into a business plan, but how to relay it virtually, which I thought was amazing. Like for those of you that don't know, I have a bachelor's in business administration and I have a master's in international business. And so my original studies are all in business. And so this, I geeked out during chapter two, if I could be totally honest, like I thoroughly enjoyed it just cause you know, when I did start my business personal training, you know, I was using examples of other businesses, but this module specifically, you know, gave you examples of fitness businesses. And that was great to be able to just kind of compare my business and, you know, my business plan and just be able to see, oh, I can improve here or, oh, I didn't think of that. And so it just really helped me just kind of, you know, give me so many ideas and ways to improve my business currently and how to, you know, revamp my business plan because I hadn't looked at it in a while. And, you know, that is something that you should look at often and constantly be updating. And I hadn't done that in some time. So that was a really good thing for me. But again, it just went over working in your business versus on your business. Um, you know, gave you basically a business plan for virtual coaching, which is like your executive summary, your vision, your mission statement, um, and all the features and benefits to your products. So out of all the chapters 
in this course. I took a lot out of chapter two and one other um, chapter that I'll share with you guys a little bit later. But chapter two was building a business and it was a semi-long module, um, had three, three modules. Um, chapter three was technology considerations. It was kind of long, had three modules and it just kind of went over like a computer, like computer, your hardware, your CPU, your video software, word processing, you know, spreadsheets, you know, conferencing, basically how to conduct your business with technology virtually, which I kind of thought was common sense, again, just because I've been virtually training clients for over a year now. Um, and so I really didn't take much out of that. But for somebody brand making new into virtual training, I'm sure that they would take a lot out of that. Just I had been doing it for so long and just with the way our society is with social media and whatnot, just a lot of these things I thought were common sense and just I didn't really see the point. Um, chapter four went over communication, um, communication and coaching strategies, which I did take some insight from this, just, you know, and how I communicate with others. You know, you can always take pointers and learn something when it comes to communication, just because, you know, training virtually is very different versus training someone in person virtually, you know, you have, um, you know, you don't have that hands-on, um, uh, hands-on, uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but you know what I'm trying to say. You don't you don't have that hands-on um, direction that you can give versus just virtually. You, it's really about you know your cueing and you know making sure that they're doing things correctly, make sure they're not injuring themselves, and also taking into into account their um, environment and the angle of the camera, whether you can really see anything, and just. Um, it talked about open versus closed questions, and just you know how to set goals with someone virtually, and just you know, the stages of change model, which is like the stages that someone goes through when they're, you know, thinking about buying a product or service and just, yeah. So a lot on communication, which, you know, I took from. So chapter four was great. Chapter five was administering assessments. Um, this chapter was very long. Um, it went over objective assessments versus subjective assessments, different assessment types, and how you can um, integrate technology into some of these assessments. Um, this chapter I didn't particularly like just because some of these assessments they went over like you're not going to be conducting as a personal trainer or virtually just because you're either not going to have access to the equipment or like some of these assessments, you know, aren't accurate. And so like why did they even mention them, you know, if they're not accurate, like, you know, tell me what I need to know, not what I don't need to know, which it is important to not to know what you don't need to know. but. It depends on the situation and just in this scenario, I really didn't see the point in discussing assessments that I'm not going to be conducting or that the data isn't always, you know, correct or conclusive. And so, yeah, so I didn't like that portion of the chapter, but, um, you know, I did take a lot out of the technology types just because, um, you know, a lot of people are using Fitbits and their phones and different devices to track their calories and steps and whatnot. So it was good to kind of um, get an overview of what all is available in the market right now. And so that was cool. Um, chapter six was implementing coaching sessions. Um, basically how to prepare before, um, you know, you train someone virtually, how to take your environment into consideration and how to virtually communicate effectively and just verbal and visual like instructions. And so, you know, I, I took some cues from this chapter. Um, I, it was it wasn't anything that I didn't already know, like I said, just because I've already been training people virtually, so I have been taking my environment into consideration. But something that you know I did take into consideration was um, the person's environment. To a certain extent, I have been, but it dug a little bit deeper as far as like you know the type of shoes that they're wearing, what kind of support and soles, the floor that they have, whether it's slip or non-slip, and then also the angle of the camera. So it kind of went deeper and in that respect and I did appreciate that and it did make me think a little bit more with some of my current clients that I work with like how could we improve you know our training sessions or oh have I taken this into consideration when I work with this person and just yeah so that was cool. Chapter 7 um, talked about integrating wearables into virtual coaching. This one I didn't particularly like just because they're very various different variable uh, fitness wearables that are out in the market right now not everyone's going to have these things. Um, when you train them virtually and so you have to take that into consideration um, and also it went into like biometrics like very in-depth biometrics that I didn't think was relevant to virtual coaching just because some of these wearables I'm not going to be using with my clients but uh, you know it's a good information to know I just didn't think it was very relevant um, you know versus in-person sessions if that makes sense um, and it talked about how to create a program integrating wearables which was um, which was good, good to know. And then just baseline um, goals, 
you know, starting point versus your goals and um, of, of the client and how to incorporate wearables with that and just, yeah. So I didn't really particularly like chapter seven, but I mean, it served a purpose. Like it gave good insight. Now, chapter eight was selling virtual coaching. So it was basically a sales chapter. It went over sales, marketing, pricing strategies, goals, how to onboard a client, um, how to do billing, how to collect payments. Like it went thoroughly into that whole process. And again, I've been doing this for over a year now. And so it just kind of validated that some of the processes that I have in place are, are good or, you know, are, you know, on par, or, you know, what the standard is and just gave me some ideas for other, um, other opportunities or other programs I could possibly start incorporating or use in the future. So I definitely like chapter eight a lot. It just had to do with sales and virtual selling, virtual coaching essentially. And then chapter nine was marketing, virtual coaching. Chapter nine, although the title sounds good, we marketing. Um, it was very short and I feel like they could have done a lot more with it. <laughs> they could have expanded a lot more on the marketing. But again, I've been doing this for a long time, for about four years now, um, just training in general and marketing myself as a personal trainer. So it wasn't anything that I didn't already know. So yeah, so that is that. So the most that I took out of this virtual coaching course was chapter two, which was building a business, which was you know building a business plan virtually. And then also chapter eight, which was selling virtual coaching. So um, with that said, again, the course was $350. I don't think it was worth $350, again, because I was able to complete it within a week, just dedicating like two hours a day to my studies. Um, but I did need to recertify. That was the price I did end up paying it. It's done, it's done. <laughs> but um, I did take a lot of good information from it, and I still do have access to the course um, for a year. Um, and just yeah so that is a brief overview of the course and so in addition to taking the virtual coaching course to recertify this year i also needed to take my um renew my cpr and aed certification and so i did that through the red cross normally you have to do that in person but due to COVID and the pandemic they're allowing people to renew their cpr and aed certification online so i did that with the red cross and here is my um completion oh and this is my old certification um, for NASM. This is my new one that I got or that I printed um, after I completed the course. Now I will get another one like this in the mail within four to six weeks, I believe. But, um, you know, they gave me the option to print it. So I went ahead and printed it, you know, just for this video along with my um, CPR one. But this is what I'm going to be getting in the mail in a couple weeks, um, four to six weeks, I believe I'll be getting that. But uh, yeah, and so what I really liked about the, I took more out of training for CPR and AED online virtually versus in person in the past. Like I really liked the course online through the Red Cross. Like they kind of set it up like, a, not like a video game, but just um, missions, you know, different missions. And like I physically had to press my mouse like, you know, 30 times for the compressions and I did have to breathe in twice and, you know, you know, hold it down and pause. And so, you know, taking the CPR and AED, um, first aid CPR AED class on, um, line with Red Cross, I thought was great. I would love it if, um, NASM would extend that in the future, not only just now due to the pandemic. Now, if you're first, now, if you're getting your certification for the first time, you know, getting certified through CPR and AED for the first time. Yes, I do believe you need to go in person, you know, for a couple times. But again, this is like my second or third time doing it because I've done it in the past for previous jobs that I've held. Um, this is my second time doing it for NASM and just, you know, it was great, like just having to do it multiple times because um, I did CPR, adult CPR and AED in addition to first aid. Now to recertify, you don't need to do the first aid, but I just opted to do it just because I thought, you know, it would be good information for me to know just in case you never know. And so, um, you know, for every single scenario, whether it was like seizure, seizures, choking, you know, stroke, um, you know, they had me do the whole process of, you know, checking the scene, checking the person, asking for permission to help and doing the chest compressions and the breaths and whatnot. And I had to do that multiple times for every single scenario. And I felt like I got more out of that doing the CPR and AED class online versus in person. Cause in person you do do it on a, you know, actual dummy doll and stuff. But you only do it like three or four times and then you're back in your seat, you know, doing all the classwork. So this, you know, it, was, it gave me different scenarios and I had to do it multiple times. So like, you know, 
over time it was just you know I got it down pat like there's <laughs> in any situation first aid situation CPR AED I'm ready to go but um so I thought that was pretty cool just being able to certify online through the Red Cross and that they kind of set it up like a video game a simulation and just I got a lot out of that so that is all I've got for you guys as far as the virtual coaching through NASM course as well as the um, CPR and AED and if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video by giving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I upload videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Until next time. Bye, guys.